Alrighty, welcome back everyone. And now as we see, we're moving through all the structure of space-time style questions. We saw what proper velocity was uh, based on a proper four vector for position. Let's go ahead and see what the proper acceleration is. And for this question, we'll go ahead and define a proper acceleration in the obvious way. The um, contravariant vector here, or contravariant four vector, alpha mu is defined as uh, the proper time derivative d by d tau of the eta mu, which is the uh, proper velocity four vector, which can be broken down into the proper uh, position four vector, again with proper time tau. Um, so for part a, what we want to do is find alpha zero and alpha, again, zero being the temporal and the rest one two three be in position or spatial in terms of the ordinary acceleration and ordinary or excuse me ordinary velocity and ordinary acceleration b express the four-dimensional scalar product so again remember lower indice is uh covariant and upper indice is contravariant again some text may or may not switch that point is that you have to flip the sign on the temporal when multiplying these two. Anyways, we want to express this uh, scalar product uh, in terms of U and A as well. And then show that the um, scalar product of eta mu alpha mu is equal to zero. D, write the Minkowski version of Newton's second law in terms of alpha mu. Evaluate the invariant product, K mu and eta mu as well. All right. Let's see what we have here. Well, for starters, if we just define based on the definition given for the equivalent statements, alpha zero is just the time derivative of eta zero, which of course from chain rule we go through uh, t and from t we get tau. So d by dt of t by tau gives us the c, or excuse me, for eta gives us the c over square root of one minus u c divided by c squared. Um, dt by d tau. Of course, this gets messy real quick, so be careful. Um, and then, as you see, we just have to take the chain rule um, via the fact that we have a square root in the denominator, so we have a power rule, and we have to take the derivative of what's inside, noting that the, uh, the u itself has to get a time derivative. Uh, so yeah, let's let the calculus work through. We see that dt by d tau is the square root thing again. We saw that in the metric uh, construction. And then finally, once we clean up everything, we see that we get something kind of nice and compact. 1 over C times the dot product of U and A over the 1 minus U squared divided by C squared squared. So nice, easy. Uh, still, you got to be careful. Note that this three halves and uh, this square root turned to one half and three halves there. So that's why we combine them like that. So that's our zeroth component. Now for the rest, we have to do the same thing, except instead of C in the numerator, right, we have a U in the numerator. So now we have a product rule, and that's where it gets messy, but we still come up to a pretty cleaned up result. Here again, we have that factor that we love seeing, but then we have a C squared minus U squared, which we saw definitely back in 10 and 11, I believe. Um, and then you see where you have the u, and then the u dot a plus a. So think about that, uh, the generalization of the Lamar formula and how all those things came in. That's because acceleration in a relativistic frame looks like this. So, moving on, and then we have b. Uh, so the invariant product, um, some call it the invariant interval. There's a lot of jargon to keep up with, but um, normally invariant only happens when you have two different things here, since we have the uh, scalar product of the same quantities. But nonetheless, you see that we have to change the sign for the uh, covariant vectors to in order to raise it to a contravariant. So that's what we need to do here. And then we see that uh, once we do that, then we just get the dots coming through. So negative a 
zero squared and then the spatial part squared. We saw what the time part was in part uh, A1 and then we saw what the spatial part was in the second to that. So let that run through. Uh, you see we put the squares on the uh, dot products and then for the spatial part we have to distribute so we got to be really careful. Um, again, this is a lot of algebra at this point. Clean up nice where you can, how you can. And then uh, you see after that, I tried color coding everything to where we can combine certain things. Factor out the u dot a squared, this factor, negative one, we get from there. Uh, u squared over c squared, get from there. And purple, we get from there. Um, color coordinating helps, but you know, it's still a messy job. So be careful. Uh, and then keep running it through the algebra. If you want to use a, you know, an online calculator to help you simplify, feel free. The mess does not get easier though, so be aware. So again, what we see here is that the uh, four-dimensional scalar product yields these things. Uh, our constants we're used to, u dot a and a, scalar, scalar, so we're good. And now let's move on to part C. So we found earlier that the invariant product of the four velocity was here we have a to mu, a to mu gives us negative c squared. And since we're defined uh, by d by d tau of a to mu, we see that d by d tau of both of those things, rather the dot product of both of those things, or the uh, invariant product, whatever you want to call it, uh, we just simply plug in the negative c squared for, and then you know what we can see is that on the left hand side we have a product rule derivative of the first leave the second alone leave the first alone derivative of the second then we see that on the right hand side since c squared has nothing to do with proper time as far as its derivative it goes to zero so with that from the product rule what we see is that uh first term goes to acceleration second term goes to acceleration and it has to equal zero and since um we can go ahead and switch orders of dot products that's easy we know that we can combine these to a two alpha mu eta mu and that has to equal zero therefore dividing the two over we get this thing equal zero so pretty clever uh pretty clever way i say instead of having to do a brute force dot products this is pretty clever um and then of course uh with the minkowski force if we're looking at things of like proper force now what we have to do is uh, we know that in Newtonian, we have a force is equal to the time derivative of momentum. So we're going to copy that concept, except now we have the proper time d tau with the momentum four vector p mu, which we can plug in here, knowing that m should be quote constant and that eta mu is with the time, the proper time derivative goes to m alpha mu and the invariant product, therefore, um, k mu eta mu is equal to the k term here with the eta and we just showed that alpha and eta in their invariant product gives us zero so m times zero zero again pretty clever i uh, just got to get used to the jargon and we'll be good see you next time